Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. Now, is this going to be the first ever video with a theme of red burgundy in which there is no red burgundy actually featuring? Well, there sort of is, and there's so well, anyway, I'll shut up. Well, I won't shut up. The first two wines I've got, so it's a Pinot Noir, so the burgundy grape, um, but it's from New Zealand. So, first one I've got here, it's Asda's Extra Special uh, 2008 Marlborough Pinot Noir. I think it's made by the people at Wither Hills. Now, let's have a see what this is like. Well, it's got, a, and this is where it doesn't smell anything like red burgundy, but what it does have is it's have this lovely, juicy, me, 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 nice raspberry and cherry and plump, no, no, not plump, but tight, taut, plummy flesh. It smells really appealing, juicy, as if it's going to be quite refreshing. The sort of wine that you could almost stick in the fridge for half an hour if it's a warm summer's day, and it'd be all the better for it. Really rather classy, that. Um, it's got a nice smoky sheen to it. It's quite plush. Um, um, ever so slightly boiled fruit. If there's a problem there, it's got that slight, ever so slightly boiled beetroot and tomato edge. But then it's, it comes back with this raspberries, this plums, strawberries, and with this silky sheen of slightly smoky oak in there too. Well done, Asta, for doing that one. Um, let's see where, whether the next Marlborough one's up to that. Crossroads Winery. Um, now, I've done some Crossroads wines in some videos in the last uh, couple of weeks, but uh, and those were from Hawke's Bay. This is their Marlborough Pinot Noir. Again, same vintage, 2008. This smells a bit more, uh, a bit less um, complex. It smells like it's almost uh, someone, the person who's making it, hasn't quite got as much of a feel for Pinot Noir. It feels like they've almost been slightly too correct with it and not let it be. They've tried to rein it in a bit too much and lost some of that, um, some of the slight exotic perfumed edges that, that were in the first one. First one. I may be wrong. Let's see whether, whether it emerges and uh, whether it tastes better than it smells. It doesn't smell bad by any means, but it doesn't smell quite as interesting as the first one. It is coming out though, um, and it's getting more into that warm strawberry edge. Um, and uh, yeah, there's almost like a slightly iron edge in there. I don't know what, what the soil is here, but uh, I don't think Marlborough's got a huge amount of iron in there, but there's the slightly metallic edge. Oh, he said burping. It's one of those where it's a bit like, here's the fruit, here's a bit of oak, and the oak's not overdone by any means, but it feels like that both of them need a bit of time to make uh, beautiful music together. I wouldn't be surprised to, um, if I came back to that in half a day's time, and they have melded in together at the moment. Uh, whereas the Asta one feels like really confident and uh, that here I am, come and get me now. Crossroad feels like uh, it's, it still needs another six months or so to uh, to knit together. Um, it's growing on me. I like that. Uh, there's, a, there's almost like a, a vein of dark cherry fruit there. And this, again, the truffly hint. So I've got a feeling that um, if I were to do the same exercise with the same two bottles when they've been open for 24 hours, wouldn't be surprised if I find my preference going more towards the Crossroad. That's if there's any of the Asda one left after I've supped it all tonight. Mm. But, um, yeah, growing on me, that one. Okay, next bit of the Burgundy theme. This is sort of like the Burgundy suburbs, Beaujolais we're in now. Next two are uh, 2009 Beaujolais, terrific vintage, and uh, these are both about 10 quid. Louis Latour Morgan. Both of these uh, are from what they're known as the crew village, is the top um, the top echelon of Beaujolais. There's basic Beaujolais, Beaujolais village, and then 10 villages that... Um, it doesn't actually say Beaujolais on the label, just the name of the village. Morgon is one of the sturdiest, and um, the next one, Bruy, is also quite sturdy as well, so I um, wasn't quite sure which way around to put them. So the Morgon first. Morgon Les Charmes, Louis Latour, 2009. Stick my nose in, it's got that spicy, peppery, violet edge. Uh, ever so slight hint of bubblegum. It feels young and boisterous. It doesn't say that I've had some uh, 2009 Beaujolais which were a bit more exotic than this, a bit more perfumed, a bit more in that Burgundian sexiness. This feels maybe just a touch correct, which is something I do find with a lot of the Louis Latour wines, certainly the reds. It, it, the first person who's made mm, slight control freakery rather than just letting them be. Uh, admittedly, it does smell nice and it's going to be crunchy and what I call sausage friendly wine. This is the sort of wine I want with uh, yeah, sausage and mash. Well, despite it not being the best 2009 Beaujolais I've had, it's a really lovely mouthful of crunchy, juicy fruit. And it's got this quite firm earthiness, um, but it's got this, yeah, it, it's, it's this, it, so Morgan always has that firm edge. And in a vintage like 2009, it's got this extra layer of flesh on it too. And uh, so the finish I'm left with, this earthy cherry kernel, raspberries, and um, yeah, this ever so slight edge of raspberries and violets. Nice. Next one, Henry Fessy, Henri Fessy, 
Um, if anyone's a fan of Charlotte's Web, the film, I think the hero in there, or the love interest, I don't know about the hero, was called Henry Fussy. Now this is Henri Fessy. Brewery 2009. Now this smells far more backward. It feels um, like it's going to be a bigger, richer mouthful, but it feels, it, the Morgon was sort of like, yeah, I'm here for you this summer. The, the, the brewery is sort of going, no. Maybe Christmas, maybe next summer, but at the moment it feels tough. It feels like it's not quite, not forbidding, but you're not going to see it at its best now. It's, by all means, you can drink it now, but um, yeah, it feels like there's more uh, layers to come out. And the, the, the fruit flavours are there. It's this nice black currants, there's blackberries, some of those raspberries and plums again. But um, yeah, it feels like a more serious stern wine. Yeah, a bit more spice, a bit more aroma. Um, the Morgan's probably got more um, obvious tannins, but this it feels like it's got a, quite a lot of backbone, and, but the fruit just feels really curled up. Um, and I prefer it as a wine. I've been drinking the Morgon tonight. Like I said, I know I'm drinking the Pinot Noir tonight. I'm just going to try and drink everything tonight. But no, if I, the one to drink first would be the Morgon. But this feels like it's got that little bit of uncurling to do. And uh, yeah, Christmas, certainly next summer, I think this is going to be hitting its stride. Okay, continuing the not red burgundy theme, but red burgundy whatever. Um, the final two, Pinotage. Pinotage is the grape made when they uh, crossed Pinot Noir with uh, what they knew in South Africa as Hermitage, otherwise known as Sanso, in order to try and uh, get something that had the characters of Pinot Noir and the profligacy of and heat sensitivity of Sanso. Uh, some would say that they achieved it, some would say that they missed by several miles, but um, hey, Pinotage, it's a great. Some people love it, some people don't. But because it's a grape, it's not going to grow everywhere. Just because South Africa's developed it, it doesn't mean you can plant it everywhere and it's going to grow successfully. De Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, sorry, Pinot Salsi, 2008, a Western Cape. Let's see if there is some of its parentage coming through. Oh, boy. That, that smells like cola sweets. Um, golly, I can't remember the last time I had cola spangles. Um, <laughs> weird. Cola spangles infused with licorice. It, um, it certainly doesn't do a very convincing impression of, uh, of Pinot Noir. Uh, not sure what it gives a convincing imp imp impersonation of, but very distinctive. Um, not maybe <laughs> very pleasurable. I might be wrong. Let's taste it. Charred bananas, cola, spangles, boiled sweets. Oh, sorry. Um, I, yeah, I can't get on with that. I, oh, sorry, as the people at Zalsi, I, yeah, uh, uh, let's see if the next Pinotage is any better. Fairview, Pinotage, 2008. It's a bit more expensive. That one was seven quid. I might rinse my glass before this one. Uh, this one's just over nine pounds. And it's a bit more restrained, calmed down, less... I mean, the other one was bouncy, but it was bad bouncing. This one has got, it's, it feels like it's going to be a fuller, fleshier wine, but it's also more subdued. Less of those overt cola, bubblegum, yucky. <laughs> They've still got some of that slightly banana-y acetone edge that, um, that was in the first one, and you find in a lot of Pinotage, but it smells like a much more uh, complete, confident wine. And it's got like a roasted, toasted edge to it too. Um, that's uh, Pinotage for Shiraz lovers. The one before was Pinotage for Pepsi lovers. This one um, has got a, uh, uh, this wealth of um, juicy, soft, plump, red berry and plum fruit uh, with a bit of toasty, ever so slightly chocolatey oak character coming through. Um, certainly a big step up. Um, not my favourite style of wine, Pinotage, uh, and there are some terrific Pinotage. I, I, there's a one called Ashbourne that, uh, that the guys at Hamilton Russell do, but... Um, but they, 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 the interesting thing is they don't put the word Pinotage on the label. Um, but, yeah, I don't mind that fair view at all. Um, and um, at, at a loss to know what to drink tonight, maybe I'll have a little sip of a few of them. See you soon.